In the following tutorial, we're going to take a look at the Extrude and Bevel tools. Let's create another new document, 1024 by 768, and we're going to start off by creating a rectangle again. So this time it'll be a square once again, and I'm going to choose the green inside fill just because that's nice. And I'm going to go to Effect, 3D, and choose Extrude and Bevel. Now let's click on Preview so that we can see that applied, and you'll see that I have my object here. Now notice that I get really dark sides. You might be wondering why that's happening. I'm going to click OK, and the reason it's happening is because I have this stroke here. Remove your stroke and you'll see a better 3D object. Now we can go back to the Appearance menu, double click or just click on 3D Extrude and Bevel, and you can go back to editing your object. Click on Preview, and you'll be able to see that rotation. Now, a um, few things that we can do here. Of course, you can understand that we're rotating our object here in, in 3D space. And we have the perspective button here that allows us to change how that perspective is going to be viewed. And we also have the ability to change how deep our extrusion is. So there's my extrusion has been made much larger now. You might notice that we're getting some shading issues. We're not getting a whole lot of great shading right now. And we're going to try and troubleshoot those a little bit too. So there's my kind of 3D box type of thing that I've extruded. And it's extruded a fair amount. Um, notice as I keep on extruding, it tends to get thinner and thinner. That's something that's kind of interesting. You just want to be aware of that. Um, now we also have bevels and caps. If I turn caps to hollow, you won't be able to see it until the object is just the right shape. Now you can kind of see through that object. And if we have flat caps, again, it's of course a solid surface on the front. And we also have the ability to do bevels. We can do classic bevels and complex bevels. And you'll kind of notice that that bevel is there. And we can change our height and make that more pronounced. So notice that height now has really made that bevel much, much more pronounced. And we have a lot of different complex bevels here as well. And notice how that bevel actually um, cascades to the whole object. So it, as you extend the length of your object, and it seems to get thinner and thinner, it also changes the bevel across the entire object. Pretty wild. And of course, the height of it changes how much that bevel is applied. Last thing here is plastic shading, or rather, if I go to more options, we can show the shading. And here we've got our light source, which we can move around. If we want to add another light, we can just click on the new light and then move that around too. That way we can refine how our 3D shading, shading looks like, or our 3D shadows look like on that particular object. And that, that will really help us fine tune how that object is going to look. And you can add other lights as well, and you can change the opacity or light intensity, um, the ambient light, how bright the object is by default. And like we can make the ambient light less, which makes this much more drastic of a 3D model. And light size, and also blend steps. Blend steps changes how fine details we have for our um, shading. If I take my blend steps down, you'll notice if you look over here, I'm going to click OK and zoom up so we can see this in more detail. You'll notice that I have those blend steps here and you can see them. So click on that, preview, go to blend steps, and you'll see those blend steps change on here very easily. As you take them up, you'll see it becomes more smooth. Now that will result um, in something different when you rasterize this object. So if I zoom out a little bit and I were to now go to expand appearance, you'll see that it changes this object a lot. And now if I look at my object, I have all these little tiny um, boxes, which are the gradient that is created by this. And notice how I have a little bit of grunginess in between. Just something to be aware of. Um, it's not a great idea for you to expand objects with a lot of 3D look to them because they tend to not do quite as well. Anyway, that's the basics of the tool. Let's uh, save your work and go on to the next tutorial.